Well, this is cheating. We're gonna cheat here this week. We're up at Wakesco Falls here. It's the end of July. Surface temperatures are still 70 degrees. I mean, it's 10 degrees colder up here than it is back home. And so you look at Northern Manitoba here, Wakesco Lake is a very large lake. Then you've got Reed Lake, you've got Tramping Lake. We've been to Wakesco Falls quite a few times over the years, but mostly to ice fish. And so I've always wanted to come up here and fish open water this time of year because they get so many great offshore bites. And so we're just using a drop shot, small offshore pieces of structure. And this is a deal where you can come up here I guess what you'd call the dog days of summer back home and just come up here and just catch all kinds of fish. That's why I say it's cheating because you can come up here in July and August and wear yourself out. So this year, like a lot of places, we had an extremely cold spring. You know, coming from through May right into the first half of June, we experienced snow and high volumes of rain and just darn right cold and there's a fish. And so what's happened is our late June or early July's transition is just happening now to these midsummer humps where all the fish start migrating to the deeper water and they just start to really congregate where you can really find them into above bear trauma depths and just hook into beautiful walleye. Oh, that was like oh, a good fish. Bulldogging. Yeah. Here he oh, comes. Yeah. Fish, There's man. a good fish. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> the first fish? The first fish, sometimes I tell you. What a beauty. What a beauty. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> nice work indeed. First fish of the day. That Look is at that. A dandy. <laughs> <laughs> Drop shotting. Some eye candy. Beauty. What a start. What a great fish. Thanks for the fun, girl. So many people ask me when the best time for fishing is, and honestly, June can be a great month, but I personally love summer. The reason I love summer is because you know that those fish have had to have gone deep. You have a whole lot of population of fish that are gonna be on small pieces of structure comparative to earlier months or later months when they can be all over the entire lake. It really concentrates you on those specific spots and they can hold a lot of fish. Oh, there's a fish. There that go, fish nice. just cracked it. Oh, oh that I, was a fun strike. Here, I'll let you go on that side all here. Right. <laughs> That was an aggressive strike. They just stay down. They just dig. Oh. They don't like getting lifted up. They don't like the light, Brian. No. Yeah, nice walleye. All right, get in there. There we go. Oh. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a beautiful fish. Great fish, Jason. Just beautiful golden walleyes. Oh. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Yeah, we'll get her unhooked here. Right in the tip of the beak. Gorgeous. We'll get her in the water here. That is beautiful. There we go. You know, when you look at the drop shot, obviously with smallmouth bass anglers in particular, especially anglers that are catching fish offshore on, on deep structure, you know, the drop shot's been the rage on the bass fishing side of the industry for quite a while. And it's, you know, it shocks me that more walleye anglers don't use it because it is such a deadly, deadly way to catch walleyes. And, and here's what I find interesting. You know, there's some lakes where you need to use finesse. There's a lot of lakes I can think of where it's really hard to catch walleyes if you're not using live bait. And the drop shot kind of crosses over where those types of lakes where you have to use finesse, where you, have, where you feel like you have to use live bait, that's where the drop shot shines. So when you have walleyes that are in say 12 to 30 feet of water and they're on a very small specific piece of structure, drop shot is deadly because it's just a way to put a very tantalizing profile or bait in front of fish and just let it work you know and, and there's a lot of different baits that'll work on a drop shot but i'm telling you 
That rigging leech, in particular for walleye fishing, is just deadly. It's the right length, you've got a variety of different colors, the right action, the right profile. When a walleye sees that, they, they eat it. I mean, it's just an easy way to catch fish. And there is so much structure out in these lakes, so we're just gonna hop from island to island here. Bunch of fish out here. I'm seeing a lot of fish in 30 to 40 feet. Some of them are suspended, but we're gonna try to try to leave those fish alone just so we don't catch fish out of deep water with barrel trauma. We're, you know, we don't plan on keeping any fish, so we're gonna see if we can try to find those fish in say 26 to 20 feet of water just so we can release them. The other thing worth pointing out too is that you know that angling edge mapping out of Winnipeg. I mean, they've they've mapped quite a few lakes out here and. That's made a big difference. So a lot of the structure I'm looking for in these humps is, since we're in a Precambrian shield, it's gonna all be rock. It's gonna be rock, it could be real big boulders, small boulders, you're never sure what the substrate will be on the top side of them. So on the top side, you're gonna be looking at that 12, 15 foot range where the fish still have room to be able to get on top of it and feed. Or you can just slide onto that 20, 22, 26 foot flats that are adjacent to it or right on the bottom side of those boulders. And you just kind of got to work at it. And then during the day and during wind conditions, they'll change, they'll move in, they'll move out. And you just kind of keep working on them and staying on them. I need the net for that one, huh? Yeah, it feels decent. Yeah. We'll see when he starts to, yeah, he's bulldogging a bit. And take some line, but not, not peel it. Like, well, he's trying. Oh, it's a pretty decent fish, actually. Let me get the net here for you. Oh, yeah. Came up a little docile there. I just love how golden they are. I mean, that's just a beautiful wall. Yep. Right there. Nice. Thanks, Jason. You bet. There you go, right in the tip of the mouth. Barbless pop out. Nice work. It taught me well there, Jason. You taught me well. <laughs> Well, these drop shot rigs are pretty simple. We're using eight or 10 pound braided line. We are using about a four foot fluorocarbon leader, which I'm just using an Alberto knot to connect the, the fluorocarbon to the braid. And basically you just take your hook, that's just a size two, just a live bait hook like you'd use on a live bait rig and start off the hook where it's upside down, okay? And then you just run, you just make a palomar knot with one extra step here. So you go in, and out just like that. I like to have about a two and a half foot tag end. That's good right there. So right now it's upside down, but then when you tie your palomar, it'll, it'll straighten out. And so you just do an overhand loop, and you've got your loop here, and you just take your tag end and run through this loop. Just like that. And then once you cinch this up, I like to get some spit on it. You just pull that tight. Okay, but here's the extra step. So there's your palomar knot. And then what you do is you take your tag end and you run through the eyelet again on your palomar knot. And what that does is it causes the hook to ride upright. Just like that. And I've got about, oh goodness, probably about a three foot lead. I've got a tungsten weight on the bottom, not just a Northland tungsten, and then I'm just rigging up this eye candy leech. I'm just hooking it once through the nose. And that's all it is. And it just 
twitching it back. Should be right about there. pushed out on us a little bit here. Yeah, when I kept seeing him at 70, so I bombed her out there and must have just been able to cast her right on top of that pod. Like <laughs> he's still a long too. ways. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's uh, partially waterlogged from the distance I cast it out there. <laughs> well, he's finally gonna fight some now. He inhaled it. Holy moly. Nope. Even though the thing's gone, it's not very far in his mouth. Come on, there we go. the end of July and we're fishing as if it's early July when all the fish start to migrate out of those weed lines into those shallower spots and start to go to mid lake and so what we're looking for is just mid lake humps fish are just stacking on top where we can catch them ethically not in those bare trauma zones and when you find those pods of fish you're sure to find a whole bunch of them right in there there he is got him yeah all right he wanted it sitting still there for a while didn't want to chase Feel like a net worthy fish? Yeah. I'm gonna say 22 inch or so. Well, Unless he that. decides, well. <laughs> I think I better get the net. Stand down, he's pretending he wants to do what he wants. Yeah, I'm gonna reel up out of your way here. I'm trying to keep him this side. You haven't even seen it yet, have you? Yeah, he's just about three feet below surface now. Oh yeah, that's a nice walleye. There, nice. Beauty, thank you. You betcha. Beautiful fish. You know, so a lot of these lakes do have a lot of cisco. You drive out over deeper water and it's just bait all over the place. And these ciscos, you know, are obviously a cool water bait fish. They'll pull out over that deeper water come midsummer. And that's why it's so good up here late, later on in the summer, is that these ciscos move out over deeper water, which up here might be say 35 to 45 feet of water. You'll start seeing all kinds of cisco. Those walleyes pull out over that deeper water to chase these ciscos down. And you know what they want to do when they get done eating cisco? They just move up onto whatever big, long, deep point or reef that they can find to rest. You know, basically, you know, we've watched underwater footage of these fish. They just lay on the rocks with their bottom fins stuck straight out and they just sway in the current and just sit there until they digest their meal. Then they get up and start cruising around. And you know, the thing to remember too is that a lot of these spots can be kind of small and so it can mean boat control. You know, in the sense that you got a little bench or a little inside turn or a little finger coming off of a hump and, you know, the, the spot holding fish, I mean, you might have 30 fish living in a spot that's the size of a two stall garage. And so that's what makes us so good is that you can get a lot of fish that are set up on just a few key locations. Well, you know, we're finding most of these fish, you know, 21 to 26 feet of water. And we're using the forward facing sonar. Basically, we're trying to set up on these fish and maybe get about maybe, oh, 30 feet away, which isn't that far. I mean. One thing about forward-facing sonar is that the doesn't matter what brand you're using, the range is a little off, kind of like side imaging in the sense of it's, it says 30 feet on your range and 20 feet of water, it's realistically, you know, maybe a boat length. And we're seeing these fish at anywhere from say 60, 70 feet, 50 feet, and just trying to position up on them, but these fish aren't spooking from the boat, and just trying to get right up on them and just making short casts, catching them. And these fish are moving. I mean, they're they're definitely moving. We wear out our welcome, then we just got to move and find a new school of fish. One's chasing it down. Oh, 
There we go. Got him. I'm gonna spot lock us right here. There's a lot of fish in front of us right now. Boy, some of these schools are big. It's double. Double? Double, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You know, I'll just lift mine in. How big is yours? Mine feels, well, theirs isn't terrible. <laughs> I don't know if I'll lift that in. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> mine is definitely not terrible. I wasn't sure at first, but he's, he's, he's dogging me deep. I'll just by hand here. And then I'll come over net yours. Yours is a pretty good one. Yeah, mine is going down. All right. As long as I'm not false hooked somewhere. All hooked. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. This is a nice fish. Oh, isn't that a beautiful sight? I'm on your side now, too, right in front of you, Jason. All right. That's a nice walleye. That's a really nice one. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll grab the net. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about that for a double? <laughs> what a circus, huh? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, there's there's the small one. That's a beautiful fish. Hold your fish up. <laughs> That's a dandy. Yeah, that is a good one. That's for sure. There he is. Look at that. He's got a white fish in him. A little Cisco. Remember that band of Cisco oh, we were seeing? Yeah. That's a bit. Look at the tail on that. So what was wild was I watched my my rig go right through that pod of Cisco that were up there, and he was sitting down below, and he followed that sinker going down, and he turned up and ate that eye candy. Boom. That is cool. Find the Cisco. Find the big fish. Beautiful fish. Here she goes. That was awesome. Pretty was funny. Awesome. She put her she put her dorsal up right before she went down. Bloop. <laughs> Supercharged. That was a beautiful fish. And that Cisco must have been 12 inches. Yeah, that's why its <laughs> belly was so big. You know, I think we first started coming up to Wakesco Falls. It might have been maybe 10 years ago or so, and we started coming up here ice fishing. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, you look at this area as a whole, I mean, there's tremendous opportunities for huge pike, there's big lake trout, there's all kinds of walleyes. But most of all, you know, we got to meet Brian and his wife, his family, and just super top-notch people. And that's the thing is you find a good area like this where there's phenomenal fishing and you meet some really good people and that's, you know, that's usually what it takes to turn something into a tradition. And so we've been coming up to Wakesco Falls for a long time and truly it's one of our favorite places, one of our very favorite fishing camps just because of the Bogdans, just such great people, great cabins, but just a tremendous area. This is a special part of the world, I'll tell you that. So Wakesco Falls Lodge originally was actually a sawmill here in the early 60s and it eventually turned into a fishing lodge mid 60s. We're now the fourth owners of the lodge we bought in 2010 so we're in our 15th fishing season this year. So what drew me into this area for Wakesco and Tramping Lakes is just the fact that not only do we have lots of walleye but they grow super big here and there's a few factors that are because of that. Number one is our genetics. Genetics are great. Number two is our food source. We have lots of Cisco's, which is what you need to get those big fish. And the last thing is the policies that were implemented into our area of the no harvest rate over 21 and a half inches. So all those walleyes that those 23s to 28s or 30s, they all have to be put back in the water. It gives a chance for those fish to even grow bigger as well as for each angler to catch them again. Got one? Yeah. All right. Gonna spot a lock here. We're seeing a lot of them. Good one. Uh, get out of your way. I, I'm probably the worst judge of fish <laughs> this today. All fish are good fish. Solid fish. Oh, I'll get the net here for you. Yeah. There we I'd go. say that's a good one. <laughs> that's an all right. Yep. Yeah. Beauty, beauty walleye. 
flare up there a little bit. It's pretty when they do that. Got him? On the drop? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good fishing. Good living. Oh yeah, there's a nice walleye. Oh. <laughs> what a cool part of the world. I love coming up here. Don't ever get to come up here enough. Yeah, go ahead and hit it. Thank you. All right. This is just an incredible area. Oh, that fish does not want to give it up. I mean, the number of fish that you can catch in this part of the world, unbelievable. It's almost August, so you know, very tail end of July. You can come up here July, August, late summer, when things might get tough on a lot of places back home in the States. And this is just lighting up. I mean, this is just really, really good fishing. One of our favorite places to come over the years. And so definitely, uh, if you have a bucket list, this is a spot you want to put on it. <laughs>